Hi everybody, Steven here. If you ever wondered how to set up a software iSCSI initiator on your ESXi host in a vSphere environment, stick around, we're gonna cover it. We'll also take a look at formatting the volume with the VMFS6 file system, and we'll talk about the reclamation priority as well, but you're gonna have to stick around to the end to see that. So see you in a bit. Hi everyone, thanks for sticking around. Uh, so why don't we jump into it and take a look at this. By the way, before I do that, if this is something you may be interested in, please hit that subscribe button. Uh, would be very much appreciated. Uh, without subscribers, there's no content, right folks? So I'd really appreciate you hitting that subscribe button. But without that, let's jump right into it now. Let's go into here. So if you've been following along my series of uh, videos, uh, we actually built our environment uh, up from the ground up. Uh, and the last set of videos we, we talked about networking. Again, you're gonna wanna watch that. And we created our distributed switch. I talked about standard switches and distributed switches. My host right now has 200, uh, sorry, 200, has two uplinks, okay? Um, and I, you'll see I actually have three hosts. So my distributed switch basically has a port group called PG Management and that's all. So when I want to enable the software iSCSI, I, technically I can do this. I can just go to my host, configure, and I can go into storage adapters. And right over here, notice there's, it also shows me VMHBA1, VMHB64, and VMHB0, right? Uh, I can click on add software adapter and then select iSCSI adapter and I'll say okay. I'm gonna give it a few seconds. You see that down at the, the recent task pane. So it's done and it pops up. Now you can select this and what you don't wanna do, you don't wanna hit rescan right now. We still need to set this up. So I'm gonna do this on my host two, host, sorry, host three. Host two's already got it. So let's add to iSCSI. There we go. And uh, we give it a few seconds. Did I hit okay on that? Yeah, I did. So there we go. It's, I'm not gonna rescan anything at this point. One of the things we need to do now is go in and add in um, um, our iSCSI storage subsystem, right? So uh, now I could do this before or after, it doesn't really matter, but I'll select the host bus adapter and then I'm going to go into dynamic discovery. Uh, dynamic discovery, um, you type in the IP address or IP addresses of your iSCSI uh, subsystem. So mine's on 172.20.10.14. Oops, and it, mine's using port 3260, and I'm gonna inherit authentication from the parent as well. Uh, I don't have authentication set up on it, but I could set up CHAP, Challenge Handshake Authentication Protocol, to authenticate to the subsystem, have each host, but I don't have that set up. I'll say okay. Um, then I say you should rescan. I'm not gonna do that yet, okay? Uh, dynamic discovery basically allows me to send out what's called a send targets to it, and it will return back, say, hey, here's the lens I got configured for you. Static discovery is where you actually have to go in and manually program in the fully qualified domain name of the lens and all that kind of stuff. So I'm just going to dynamic. Let me repeat that process on my, um, on my host three. I've already done it on host two. So let's go into uh, dynamic discovery. Let's add in. And this is going to be uh, 172.20.10.14. And again, port 3260, and I'm okay. I'm not gonna rescan. So why do I wanna rescan? I actually wanna get into network bindings. I wanna force my servers to use the VM kernel ports I want it to use, and not potentially other VM kernel ports like management. Uh, this actually has to be, this actually is on my management network, so I don't want it using my uh, VM kernel zero, the management port for my host. So I'm gonna go to my distributed switch, and I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna right click on it, I'm going to create, now this is optional if you want to do this, but I'm going to create a port group, new distributed port group, and I'm going to call it iSCSI1. iSCSI, whoops, let's uh, learn how to spell iSCSI-1. And I'll say next. I'm going to leave all the stuff here at the default. If you got a VLAN, you would set that up. Watch my video on networking if you want to set up VLAN. And I'm going to say next, and I'm ready to process, right? So there we see I got my port group iSCSI1. I'm going to create a second one. Um, uh, distributed port group, new distributed port group. I'll call it iSCSI-2 and I'll go next. And um, I'll leave all the defaults here. I'll go next and I'm finished. Great. 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this part group here and I'm going to edit settings. Now, again, there's different ways we can do this, but I'm going to go into team in and failover and I'm going to say, you know what, this port group's only going to use uplink one. I'm going to move it to unused and I'm going to say, okay, yeah, SCSI two will use the other port group. So I'm forcing it to actually use these, which I will be forced to use specific NICs. So I'm going to move uplink one down to unused. So uplink one is going to be used by SCSI two, uplink two, uplink one will be used by iSCSI one. Sorry, let's try this again, folks. Uh, iSCSI 1 port group will use uplink 1. iSCSI 2 port group will use uplink 2. And I'll say OK. All right. Great. Now what I want to do is create some VM kernel ports on my host, sign IPs to them, and then have them go out and discover the storage there. So let's do that. Let's uh, go into the host view now. Let's pick my host 1, and let's go into configure under networking VM kernel ports you'll see I only got one there management we're still building our environment I'm gonna say add networking I'm gonna say I want to create a VM kernel port for my IP based storage I'll click next it's saying what port group do you want to use or what do you want to you want to create a new virtual switch I've already got my port group I'm gonna pick iSCSI 1 and I'll go next then again here's my lab, network label uh, typically with iSCSI you're probably gonna go with jumbo frames okay uh, and your IP stack, again, you probably leave it at the default IP stack, but again, you'll probably want to um, um, increase the, your frame size here, your MTU size, it's like 9,000 bytes. I'm in my lab environment, I don't care. All the other services here, I'm not using any of those on this, so I'm going to say next. This is where I set my IP information, so I'm going to say 172.20.10. What I address am I going to be using again? Uh, 161. Right, and then the subnet mask will be 255. Oops, 255.255.255.0. Um, I can override the gateway. Technically, going through gateways, routers with your IP storage is a bad idea because of latency. So, I'm not going to bother, right? So, I'm going to go next and I go finish. I just created an IP storage, sorry, a VM kernel port on that port group. Let me repeat the process and do the same thing on the other port group. So, add networking, I'll do VM kernel. Let's go in and select iSCSI 2 port group. Let's go in and I'll leave all this stuff the same. I talked about it. I'll put in an address. This one will go 172.20.10.171. Okay. Now, realistically, I'd probably put these on different subnets, but I don't have my lab set up for that. But in the real world, I probably would have this on two different subnets, two different switches type of thing with multipathing set up. I'm going to leave the gateway stuff at the default and I click next and finish. So I've actually done that on my host one. I'm going to do the same process on host, um, host um, two and three, okay? So I'll probably speed this up, all right? So let's go into host two. So there, um, so there, I've, I've set up uh, host one with two more VM kernel ports uh, on the port group iSCSI 1 and iSCSI 2. Uh, and again, I did the same thing with uh, host two, with iSCSI 1 and iSCSI 2. You'll see their IPs. And then last but not least over there, like I said before, in the world wide, I'll probably put these on different subnets, different switches and stuff. Um, if you're not using a distributed switch, which I am here, I would have to go in and create standard switches on each of these or use an existing standard switch and add port groups onto each um, uh, standard switch on each host because it's a per level configuration. Okay, so we've done that. Um, 
Uh, so the last thing for me really to do is scan the storage. So everything should be set up. Oh, hang on a second. No, there's one more thing I'm going to do. So I'm going to configure under storage, storage adapters. Uh, let's go to our first host here. I'm going to select my iSCSI adapter. Network bind port binding. I'm going to click on add. And then I'm going to say use these two here. And I'll say OK. And then we'll give it a little refresh. It's telling me I made a change and I should rescan. Hey, I'm going to hold off for a little bit, right? I'm going to do the same thing for host two. Let's go into the iSCSI adapter, network port binding. Let's add that. I'm going to tell it to use these two VM kernel ports and not my management port. I'll give it a few seconds. It comes up. Do the same thing on host three. Let's go and select the adapter, network port binding. I'm going to add and I'm going to tell it to use those port groups I created. And I'll say, OK, we wait. And there we go. So now what I need to do is, you guessed it, scan, right? I'll select the adapter and I can go rescan the adapter and I can go rescan storage. I'm going to hit rescan storage. I do both. I'm going to repeat that on all my servers. Rescan storage. OK. And technically, I just need to rescan storage. I'll, I'll rescan the adapter just to be on the safe side. So we wait for everything to come up. If I go back to host one now, let's select the adapter. And what do we see here? If I go to devices, give it a few seconds. Boom, we see it found a device, LUN0. I'm actually using a free NAS, or sorry, true NAS storage subsystem so it sees a 100 gig LUN. I only created one LUN, that was it. I could create more, maybe I'll do more later, but for now, whatever. If I pick host two, let's look at the same thing. Select the adapter, go to devices, give it a few seconds, and it sees it. And then last but not least, host three, I'll pick the adapter. And I've set this up, by the way, for shared storage, right? Let's go to devices. So again, I've got a storage subsystem with LUN or LUNs. I just got one LUN created right now. And I'm setting up, setting up shared storage to allow us to do clusters and vMotion, all these wonderful things. So now what I want to do is create a data store. Now, there's multiple ways for me to right. I can right click on a host. I can right click on my uh, data center. I can go into uh, my storage view here, data store view. And, and then again, I can right click on. Actually, if I go to my, stated, my data store view, all you see is this one data store. Site A, ESX IO1 local. This is actually a local disk on my first host, and that's where my vCenter is running. So I'm actually going to right click here, uh, and I can say storage, uh, new data store. And I say over here, I want to format it with VMFS, or do I want to mount an NFS share, or am I playing with something called VVOLs, virtual volumes? I'm not doing any of the last two. So we'll say VMFS, and then at that point, I'll pick a host. Uh, pick one of these doesn't matter it will find that data store there actually you know I probably should have picked host yeah actually so when I picked the host it actually found the local disk the 40 gig disk and uh, my um, my LUN that I actually created right um, again we're all in a virtual it's all in a virtual environment it's coming up as a flash storage but eh, whatever um, which actually this truly a flash so I'm going to select my true NAS here. Now, this is the part you want to make sure you pick the right LUN because it could be one of those career-limiting moves, folks, if you pick the wrong one, right, and format it. So I'll say, okay, I'm going to format this. I'll go next. Do I want to format with the VMFS6 file system, which is the newest one, uh, support for 4K drives in native mode, uh, supports automatic uh, space reclamation support? I'll touch on that in a second. Or do I want to uh, uh, format it with uh, VMFS5? VMFS6, I came out, I believe it was uh, vSphere 6.5. So if you've got older hosts that need to share this data store, you have to go with VMFS5. But again, let's, you know, I've got everything all nice and new and fresh, so I'm going to pick the latest one. Uh, by the way, you cannot, you cannot upgrade an existing, as of today anyways, I'm talking 8.0. You can't upgrade from VMFS5 to VMFS6. You got to basically move all your VMs off the, vi the 5 volume and then delete it and recreate it. So I'm going to say, all right, version 6 here. Now it's asking me, do I want to use all the space or use a little bit of it? Honestly, uh, personally, reason I cannot see why you would want to partition this out. So in the production, you're gen generally going to say, let's use the whole thing. And that's what I'm going to do. The block size for VMFS6 is 1 meg. The, block, the space reclamation granularity is 1 meg. So we'll reclaim. Now, 
So you got space reclamation uh, granularity and you got reclamation priority. So this is uh, stuff that people are, are a little bit maybe unsure of, right? Notice my priority can be low or none. So space -like reclamation, what is that? If somebody configured a physical storage subsystem as a thin provisioning, I'm not talking about virtual disk being thin, that's a different beast. Your physical LUN, for example, my 100 gig LUN, my physical LUN on my iSCSI storage, if they provision that as a thin LUN, vSphere or your ESXi host on VMFS6 has the ability to send out what's called unmap or umap commands back to the storage saying, hey, you know what? Uh, we don't need these blocks anymore. Uh, go ahead and uh, remove them, right? You don't have to keep in increasing the size of our thin disk. Again, I'm not talking virtual machine disks being thin, I'm talking about your array storage LUN being thin provision, because you could do that at the hardware level. And that's what this is all about. So the, the granularity is one meg, that's all you got for your choice there. So anything less than that doesn't get reclaimed. We're saying, you know, if you got a, if you're gonna, you know, save me only like, you know, 10K of space, don't bother, it's not worth the overhead. So one meg or more, it reclaims. Priority, low or none, none, none means, you know what? I'm not gonna send out that unmap command. You can do it manually, all right? Or this low says, we will send out the unmap command. Um, and let me show you something here. There's actually an article here. Let me just bring this up, okay? Here's this article here that they talk about it, right? Now, I mentioned we got uh, low priority, low, uh, low priority, and here we go. So low uh, basically says, okay, we'll do unmaps basically of up to 25 to 50 megabytes per second. That's how much we'll tell the storage, hey, go ahead and reclaim that stuff. We don't want to overload you. It's a low priority, right? None like says, don't do any unmaps. Medium priority says, okay, I need, I want you to reclaim stuff at a faster rate, anywhere between 50 and 100 megabytes per second. And then high, again, anything over, um, um, it's three times faster than low, over 100 megabytes per second. In other words, you're telling your disk subsystem, hey, make a high priority in reclaiming these blocks. And I think this is going to boil down to how aggressive you're doing thin provisioning on your storage rate. Don't get this confused with thin provisioning of your virtual disk, okay? But hang on a second, in the GUI here, I only get a choice of low and none. So how can I go medium or high? Well, uh, in my lab environment, I don't care. I'm going to say none. Uh, how do I do medium or high? You have to use the ESX CLI command. Let's bring this back. You have to use the ESX CLI command on the host to change it to medium or high today. Anyways, as of version 8, I don't know if that has changed or anything. Great. I'm going to hit next. Gives me a summary. I'm going to hit finished. And then I just basically wait, right? And you see, it's actually complete. If I go to, so now actually, um, um, actually didn't give it a label. I probably should have, but it doesn't matter. It's called data store. I don't care. Um, notice now I've got my data store. This is a shared volume between all three of those servers, those hosts. Let's go to host and clusters view. Let's click on host one. Let's look at data stores. It sees it's local and it sees the data store there. Let's go to those two. There it sees data store, and then it sees data store. We've now created a shared volume between these three hosts. Okay, and that will come into play later on when we start playing with vMotion and other cool clustering stuff in vSphere. Um, but that's it. I hope you found this beneficial. Um, hit that subscribe button if uh, if this is stuff that you like. Leave comments down below. Hey, if there's something you want to see. Uh, put it down below. I'll see what I can do. I have limited resources. I'll see what I can do. Uh, also, if you found this even the slightest bit entertaining, hit the thumbs up. Thanks again, and we'll see you down the road. Have a good one.